Probably guys, we've all seen it as that awful chromic aberration. Even though you can remove it in Camera Raw and Lightroom, sometimes as your post-production workflow, you can sort of reintroduce those unattractive elements back into your shots. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to remove in Photoshop right now. Okay, so here we are in Camera Raw. So we've got this really nice sunrise shot. And over here, we've got some really strong chromic aberration with that red fringing and the cyan fringing. So really, really common sort of chromic aberration here. If we have a look up the top, we sort of got it through the trees, come through, got a little bit on the lighthouse there. But the main area obviously is here. So if I come in and I just select remove chromic aberration from the optics section, you can see it's removed it, but you can see how you still got that very, very light red fringe there and a little bit of the cyan fringe. So this is what I'm talking about is as you start to post-reduce your image and start to re-add color, because that's red and you start to saturate, say the reds in the sky, it's gonna to start to affect this part of the image. So I'm gonna click open. Okay, so here in Photoshop, I'm just gonna zoom in. Now there's two ways you can really do this. The first way, I don't really like it too much at all. I'm gonna come in, Command J on our background layer. Come into filter, lens correction. And I find this interface really clunky as you can see how that loads in. Down here, if you start to change your Zoom, it loads in again. But if you come over to custom, you can actually play around with the red cyan fringe, green magenta fringe over here. And it's, it's just, it's really not good. Have a play with it, but I don't like it at all. I'm gonna hit cancel. So I find there's a much better way to do it. But first, what we're gonna do is just gonna simulate basically some color editing. So I'm just gonna come down and add a hue saturation layer. And I'm gonna increase to say around like plus 30. Now, if I zoom in over here, you can see how I've re-added in chromic aberration into your shot. So the way to do it is you basically hit L on your keyboard for your lasso tool, or you can find it in your toolbar up here as lasso tool. Come in and do a selection. I have this set to a feather of one pixel. It doesn't really matter for this technique. Come in, image, adjustments, replace color. Now with your eyedropper tool, if you hold the shift key, you'll put a plus sign, I'll hold your option key and I'll put a minus sign in. So you can start to add and select from your mask. So it's gonna select the red. And as you see over here, it's a very small preview. White will reveal, black will conceal. So I've got some whites coming in through here. So I'm gonna hit the minus sign and just deselect that the best I can. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it doesn't. This kind of process is a little bit trial and error to get it right. So once you've done your selection, come through and you're gonna play with your hue, saturation and lightness. And what you're looking for is to remove the red, but also try and have the tone match. So like for here, I'm trying to get it to match the rocks. So I've got, that's at plus 45. So it's just got kind of brown with just a tiny bit of yellow in it. I'm gonna reduce the saturation. And then I'm just gonna darken it slightly. So this is before and after. So you can see we've removed that red fringing. And the whole idea is to remove it as best you possibly can. Sometimes you'll get rid of all of it. Sometimes you'll just have a little, little tiny fringe there. Almost what you originally had when you did the camera raw or Lightroom preset for removing chromic aberration. So you just basically just fiddle around with it. You can hit your eyedropper tool with your plus sign and try and get a better selection. If that doesn't work, just go Command Z and undo it. And yeah, so I'm just gonna settle with that. Click OK to accept it. Command D to deselect and just toggle it on and off. You just wanna see if you have affected any of the areas outside, especially with the water. And as I can see, I've got a, probably a little bit of a tonal range difference in the rocks. It's not too bad, but if you did find that you had a bit of a weird sort of transitional toning, all you do is you come down, add a white mask to it, B for your brush tool. With your color palette here, if it's just not black and white, hit D on your keyboard, and then hit X to toggle between black and white. So with black, up with your opacity here at 100%, and then you can just come in and you can just start to repaint in and mask out that adjustment that you did on this layer. As you can see, we've got rid of the fringing there. 
Now with your cyan, you just basically just go through the same process. L on your keyboard for the lasso tool. Make sure you're selecting your pixel layer, not the mask. Come through and do your selection. Now the problem with the cyan in this shot is the cyan is actually a very similar color to the water. So image adjustments, replace color. And again, you're coming through with the eyedropper tool. As you can see with this little mask here, white will reveal, black will conceal. But because we know that the cyan is a very similar color to the water, we're probably gonna to have to accept that. And then just come through and just play. And you can just remove it. Again, you're doing this to remove it as best as you possibly can. So preview, before, after. Click OK to accept it. Command D to deselect. And as you can see, we've got this weird sort of fringing around there. So this is why you're gonna be using your mask. B for your brush tool. Click on your mask. Painting black at 100% again. And you're just gonna come through and just paint out that sort of error that you had with doing that replace color in the water. Let's just remove the fringing. Still got a little bit of an issue down here. And again, it's just about playing with it. You might wanna go in and do it twice. Or with something like this, you could go in with the clone stamp tool and just remove it. And you'll find as well as because you've, because this is a more of a stronger sort of area of your shot, as you look through your trees and your lighthouse, it, it hasn't reapplied any of the chromic aberration in there. It really is only in the areas where you've got it really, really strong and your removal of it in camera raw or Lightroom hasn't removed it 100%, maybe moved, removed it 80 or 90%, but then you adding that extra color in as your post-production has re-brought it out from basically 90% removal back to maybe 50% removal or 60% removal. So this is a really good process to, to go in and just fix those major sort of areas where it's been reintroduced back into your image. So that's how easy it is, guys. I'll leave a couple of links to some other videos here for you to have a look at. And as always, thanks for watching. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel if you like videos like this, and I'll see you next time.